Hola, Barcelona. I've been dying to say that all day. Let me just try it one more time. Hola, Barcelona. <laughs> so have you ever had a moment when your life takes a 90-degree irrevocable turn? When everything up until that moment has been propelling you in one direction, and then suddenly something happens and you're stopped, dead in your tracks. You just can't go another step down that road. Well, that moment happened for me on the last day of 1985 on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. I can remember it really clearly because I literally was stopped dead in my tracks. I injured myself really badly. I pulled my left hamstring and I couldn't take another step up the mountain. So I have this favorite phrase from a Native American chief, Black Elk, who says, the good road and the road of difficulties that you've made in your life may one day cross. And that crossing is holy. Well, let me tell you how I got to that holy place. I was fresh out of college, taking a year off before what I thought was going to be law school, and I took a job teaching in a rural Kenyan school, teaching English. And it was a great job. <laughs> and a lot of my friends wanted to come visit me. So I had a friend from New York come over, and he wanted to climb Kilimanjaro. He brought with him one of those old VHS cameras. <laughs> this will date me, because cameras have really gotten a lot smaller since then. Anyway, we started climbing the mountain together. And he started filming himself, quoting passages from Ernest Hemingway's Snows of Kilimanjaro the whole way up the mountain. Well, I didn't pay much attention to him or the camera until I got injured. And I was sitting around feeling sorry for myself, nursing my wound. I was, of course, one of those type A personalities. There was no way I wasn't going to summit that mountain. So, I picked up the camera. I started filming the landscape around me, and almost immediately, something shifted inside me. It was, it was like I had this tool that I could pick up and reframe my world. It took my mind off the pain, and I was able to make it to the top of the mountain filming the entire way. And I've never put the camera down since. So, of course, I ditched my plans for law school, and I went to film school. Fast forward 20 years, and I'm back in Kenya, this time as a journalist and a documentary filmmaker. I went there to cover the 2007 national presidential elections, and I was actually mentoring a young woman, a young Kenyan woman who wanted to become a filmmaker. Her name was, well, I'm going to call her Grace for reasons of anonymity. We were working together in what was supposed to be a shining example of democratic elections in Africa, and they went terribly wrong. We found ourselves surrounded in a village by militia, entire ethnic violence. We were filming, actually, a funeral for one of the victims of the ethnic violence when the police surrounded us and started shooting, and then they shot tear gas. I don't know if you've ever been tear gassed. It's not fun. And when the smoke cleared, I couldn't find Grace. She disappeared. Well, I looked for her for several days. I went to her home, I searched the hospitals, the clinics. The whole country was in upheaval, you can imagine. And I was actually on my way home, getting on a plane. They had started to evacuate a lot of the foreigners. And I finally got a call from her. She told me that she had been sexually assaulted by militia. And she asked me to stay. She said, you know, I really want to learn how to make a film about what happened to me. And then she said something I will never forget. She said, I want to learn how to become the voice for the voiceless. 
And that's really what I'm here to talk about today with all of you, a girl's voice. She could be a girl growing up in a township in South Africa. She could be a girl in the slums of Casablanca, the eastern barrios of Los Angeles, or she could be you. But the truth is, we don't really know who she is because she's never been allowed to tell her story. When statistic after statistic tells us that women are underrepresented in media, it reinforces the silencing, the dumbing down, the absence of women. Here's one of my favorites. Besides the loss of the great female titans in journalism, Jill Abramson and Diane Sawyer this past year, women's bylines only increased by 1%. Men still dominate at 67%. Men still are the majority when it comes to the hard news, reporting on science, politics, and the economy. And we've actually gone down as women journalists in sports. Apparently, men are the only ones with opinions. <laughs> I have a friend and an author who wrote a book called um, When Men Explain Things to Me. Have any of you heard of this book? I highly recommend it. <laughs> um, she writes about this position that men take all the time, this authoritative position in conversations where they're constantly interrupting us and telling us all about everything, even if they don't know anything about it. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> she even coined a phrase for it, mansplaining. <laughs> yeah, mansplaining. And here's a great example of it, a favorite comic of mine from The New Yorker. I don't know if you can read it, but it says, that's an excellent suggestion, Miss Triggs. Perhaps one of the men here would like to make it. This teaches girls at a very young age to doubt their voice, crushing them into a silence, and telling them, you know what? They're better people at telling your story, basically men. Which is why I founded Global Girl Media. Together with a group of friends, fellow filmmakers and journalists, educators, we were all really just tired of the same old story. So, we decided to target teenage girls, and we said, go out into your communities, take on the untold story, the story that matters, because it matters to you. So how many girls are in the audience tonight? Like under age 18, let's hear it, okay? Because I come to a lot of these women's conferences, and I'm like, where are the girls? You're the future. These girls report on everything from what it's like to grow up as a lesbian in Soweto, or street harassment in Casablanca, police brutality, this is a big one right now in my country, but not just about young African-American males, police brutality against young African-American females in Oakland, or what it's like to be a teenager at age 13 in Boyle Heights, East Los Angeles. We train them in how to produce videos and blogs in underrepresented communities, marginalized communities, places where, well, CNN and Fox News just don't do a very good job. <laughs> and I'm happy to say we've been at it for about four years, and I have to read this on my hand, Yara Estem Aki. Did I say that right? I got to learn your language. It's awesome. <laughs> So we're in South Africa, Morocco, Chicago, LA, Oakland, and I just started a new chapter last week in Kosovo. And they're watching the live stream right now, I'm sure, so I'm gonna give a shout out to the Kosovo Global Girls. We've trained over 320 girls, we've produced over 600 media, that's both blogs and video, and we partner with 300 organizations around the world, both online and the partners that help us do our work in those local communities. We also have a broadband channel, so if any of you are budding journalists and filmmakers, please send it to me, and you can find my email online, but our broadband channel, please tweet it right now, www.ggmn.tv. So, Besides training the girls, we do what I like to call the three A's. I like the initial A because my name's Amy. <laughs> anyway, uh, authority. 
We give them authority, a sense that they have like an authentic voice to tell their story. We give them access to technology, to resources, to mentorship, internships, and hopefully jobs. And then the last one, agency. So by the way, that is a global girl on the left from uh, Los Angeles, and she is covering the Golden Globe Awards. She was the only African-American female on the red carpet. So what do I mean about agency? Well, I believe that a female voice, learning to own that voice, is the beginning of being able to advocate for all forms of social justice. That raising women's and girls' voices around the world actually can lead to deep systemic change, not just in media, television, Hollywood, print journalism, but in all of society. Because we're not just doing this for girls. We're doing this for all of us. But don't take it from me. Let's, let's hear it from the girls. Global Girl trains teenage girls in media to produce stories from our own perspective. Global Girl Media gives girls like me a voice to change the way girls are portrayed in the media. Global Girl Media is a great opportunity for those girls who want to empower themselves. I am capable of doing anything and my voice can give me anywhere that I want to go. I'm Alexis Smith reporting from Global Girl Media. This is Wendy Dejami. Reporting for Global Girl Media. I'm reporting today about women in the domain of journalism. What actions can be taken to bring about change? Gosh, this program, Nate, this program has been great. Being a Global Girl reporter has helped me experience many things that have been around the world and I've never knew about, like rape culture, Sex trafficking, I never knew about sex trafficking. Just having the camera in my hands for the first time, it just made me feel like I was invincible. This girl is on fire! This girl is on fire! My voice is important because I have a story to tell. I want to change the way how the media and the society treats the woman. It has changed my life completely. It has made me grow into a positive woman and more good in attitude towards the media and the, the world. There's nothing more sacred you can do as a young woman than to question authority. Some way in which we have to, to introduce this information in such a way that it begins to build a movement behind it, a serious movement. We're only talking about 140 trained young girls right now. But the way that voice has the possibility of magnifying, and not only magnifying in such a way that we people hear right, loud, and clear, but also change the direction of the discourse. I'm Alexis Smith. Sukan Arhiwi, the Global Girl Media. You voted for Global Girl Media. This is our world, our world, our world, and my voice. run the world. <laughs> so you may be wondering what happened to Grace. And I'm really happy to report that today she is a professional broadcast journalist at a television station in Nairobi. And as for me, when I think back all those years to that situation in Kenya, I realized that from the very beginning, I used the camera as a tool to process trauma, to process pain, to tap into that vulnerable place inside me, inside all of us. See, we've all been in a place in our lives where we felt powerless or silenced, immobilized, unable to take that very next step, especially young girls. So, if you have that young girl inside you still, and I'm sure you do, <laughs> I want to give you this gift tonight. And it doesn't just come from me, it comes from all these girls all around the world. 
that we're building together. I want to give you this camera to pick up, reframe your world, take your power and your place, find your voice because the world needs to hear it. Gracias.